am trying to... Everybody, this is Chuck Gerard. He's an artist here in town, but this man is also an ace machinist. Uh, I'm trying to do some counter sinks because I've got to put some of these... Flathead? Cap, flathead. Cap, cap screws. Go. I got it for a sculpture I got to put together. And this is the only bit I got that I can try to make those counter sinks with, and it's just not working, man. No, and, yeah, I, I do have a better suggestion. How about we use something like this? This is a chamfering tool used specifically for those. Let me get a close-up of that, Chuck. Hold it up for me. See? There we go. So this has the proper angle for the screw that you're trying to utilize. So we'll just go ahead and chuck it up here. Is that just a regular drill press? That's just a regular drill press, and a lot of times a machinist... We'll try to do this on a standard mill, and what happens to a lot of people that are at home, they don't have that luxury. Even a drill press like this where you don't have a lot of variable speeds, you can still accommodate it so you won't have a lot of chatter in the hole, and you'll be able to accomplish what you're needing to do. So we'll fire it up here. The first thing that happens to a lot of people is they'll get it off the center and they'll panic. It's not a problem. So we'll just go ahead and start it, and then instead of doing what Kevin was doing and have it dancing around, we'll just... Hold a little pressure down, run it reverse, and what that'll do is help center up the chamfering tool. Huh. We'll fire it up, start going into it. A lot of times, this material is not doing it. It's being very cooperative. You can hear it starting to growl. What that means is you're going to end up having a really wicked looking finish to it. So, once again, to use a drill press like a mill, we'll just go ahead, put a little pressure on it, and we'll just kind of drift it a little bit. Voila, perfect hole every time. What do you mean by drift, Chuck? Well, what happens when you drift the drill and the motor, rather than keep it under constant power and constant attention, or constant tension, all we're doing is we're letting it find the center and we're letting it cut by just utilizing a little bit of pressure and letting turning the motor off, hence drifting, not in your sports car. So we turn it on, just very delicately, Switching it on and off. <clears throat> well, when you stop it abruptly and you don't let it drift and you keep too much pressure on it, you still leave a chip in it. That's not what we want to do. Wait, wait. Hey, come here, look at that. See this? That's pretty cool. But that's not what you want. But that's not what we want. So, to help Kevin's endeavor out here, you can hear it squeaking and hollering. Keep pressure on it. And drift. Until we get the perfect counter sound call. And there you go. Great. Well, where, where can I buy those? You can buy those actually at most hardware stores. Um, or at, you can buy them online. At Ace, Home Depot? I'm pretty sure that you can actually. And keep in mind that each one of these chamfers comes in a different angle. And for what Kevin's trying to use, it's 82 and a half degrees. Which is standard. But you can get them in a 60 or a 90 degree cutter. Huh. Pretty cool, huh? Amazing. They're higher. Thank You're you. hired. I'm hired. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time.